than number one because these police officers lied and lied and lied again. They also lied under oath in a court of law. They lied one about the Mountain Dew bottle that never existed. They lied two about the neighbor who was a witness in court and said she stated that she did not know Jordan Miles and she went to court and stated that she has known him for years. Right. Lie number two, these police officers lied over and over and over again. This case is a classic case, is an apparent case, is an obvious case of crime. These three officers need to be prosecuted and found guilty. But the DA needs to allow a jury to decide. And it was you people. Church, who is also the Vice President of Kent. We thank him for being here. He has joined in this fight for justice. I don't know if you guys saw the, the press conference with NAACP, BPAP, Reverend Thornton was there representing Penn, and we are glad to have him and appreciate him standing up and speaking about what's going on in this city. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I'm so glad that we're all here this afternoon. Yes. We've got to stand here as God's beautiful, diverse hey. people. Yes. We've got to continue to stand for justice. Yes. And no matter how long it takes, we've got to keep standing. We've got to be persistent. We've got to be persistent in the midst of injustice. Yes. We've got to stand up for injustice. Yes. And when we leave here today, We've got to be bold enough to go to other people that we know and we've got to look them in their faces and say, how come you're not standing up for justice? You can be wrong when you do something wrong and you can be wrong when you don't stand up for wrong. You're just as guilty of a sin of omission as you are with the sin of commission. So we've got to keep on standing as all of God's people. And we've got to be persistent. I didn't come to preach today, but if I were to take my text, I would tell you about, in the scriptures, there was a widow woman who wanted justice. And she went to a judge that had no respect for anybody. And she continued to be persistent. She continued to make her case. And finally, the judge granted her justice, saying, let me grant this woman justice unless she wears me out. We've got to wear them out. In the name of justice, and before I hand the mic over, I just want to say, as I look around, and see these rightful indictments here. As I see these indictments posted to this building, I'm reminded of Martin Luther. Martin Luther many centuries ago, when he, in the name of doing what was right, stood even against a particular church. And he wanted to make sure that the church had some reforms in order that things would be made right. As I see these indictments, it lets us know it's time for reform right here in Pittsburgh. It's time for reform amongst the Pittsburgh policemen. It's time for reform in terms of how people are treated regardless of who they are. We're all God's people and we deserve to be treated with justice. And we need to reform the police department in Pittsburgh. We're going to stand until we do it. The police need reform. They need reform. They need new training. They need diversity training so they can understand the people that they are serving and the communities that they are. Some of these officers, I was just yesterday in the middle of a police chase in Wilkinsburg. The police officer gets out the car and asks me, where is he? 
Not only do they not know the people, they don't even know the streets and the communities that they're in. These police officers need trained for the neighborhoods that they serve. When you have an understanding of the people, in this case, Jordan Miles ran. I was told that is a culture of the police that if someone runs from you, that is a right to beat them. That is their culture. But it is a culture of inner city communities that are crime written that if an unmarked car speeds up and comes beside you and three people jump out, you run. So there needs to be an understanding of the people that they're serving in these communities. It is known that they're going to run if you're jumping out on them at 11.30 at night in a car that doesn't look like a police car. Jordan Miles said that the cry of the police, the cry of the police chief about this being a teachable moment would make sense to him had he known that these were police officers. Yes. He did yes. not run from the police. He ran from three individuals at 11.30 at night that jumped out of a car. Yes. Mr. Scott 